The following podcast is a next level production. So your brother told us about your Avengers party. He did. Yes. And even though it will be a distraction from your studies and there will be a lot of haram going on there, Kamala, we have decided to let you go. Really? 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 <laughs> yes, but there are special conditions. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your Abu will drive you there and he will go inside with you for two hours. And as far as your dressing goes, I have a surprise for you. The Hulk! <laughs> Wait, wait, best is yet to come. Ta-da! See, Kamala, big hulk and little hulk. Bada hulk or choti hulk. Huh? So cute you all will look. Hey, Palos, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the Miss Marvel Season 1, Episode 1, entitled Generation Y, which dropped on Disney+. Plus. So this is another Marvel uh, product that we're going to actually cover from now on for this whole uh, season itself. So, Steve, why don't you give us a little uh, synopsis on Miss Marvel? Sure. Kamala Khan, a teenager growing up in Jersey City and mega fan of the Avengers, feels a little out of place at school and sometimes even at home. She is determined to attend Avenger Con, even if it, even if her parents won't allow it. But that starts off as a Captain Mar, what starts off as a Captain Marvel cosplay competition takes on an unexpected turn. Is she becoming one of the superheroes she's always looked up to? Hmm. Very cool. Yeah, it was a good, good premiere. Yeah, I thought good so, too. Good first episode. Yeah. yeah, initial thoughts. What What are your initial thoughts about the actual episode overall? It was good. I am uh, I, I have to admit, I don't have a lot of notes on on this one, but I, I did just, like, like I was saying earlier, I just rewatched it, the episode before <laughs> we started recording, so it's, it's pretty fresh, but I, I, you know, I love what Disney and Marvel are doing with these last two shows, Moon Knight and, uh, Ms. Ms. Marvel, because we're doing, we're getting these diverse characters, the d- diverse cultures, yes. you know, we had Egypt with Moon Knight, now we have Pakistan, um, and of course, Jersey, um, Jersey, with, <laughs> <laughs> with here with Ms. Ms. Marvel, and uh, so it's 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 interesting to see. I was I was really excited uh, to see that part of it, and I'll be excited to see. It's you know just like with Moon Knight, I noticed at the end a lot of the names in the credits appear to be probably I'm assuming Pakistani. I don't want to make any assumptions there, but I'm assuming that's that's where uh, a, a bulk of their crew yeah. and their uh, producers and stuff are from. So that's, that's great to see that representation. That's the word I'm searching for that diverse representation. I have to agree. Definitely. I, I thought it was a great introduction to the character itself. Something that I wasn't familiar with within the comics. Mm-hmm. I actually, the only I, thing I remember from her is when reading secret wars, when they did secret wars in 2015 uh, is around the time when they brought her in. And it was okay. a new version of like a new Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, whatever you want to call it. Different power structure at this point. No Terrigan Mist as compared to the comic. In the show, she gets a bracelet. It's through Arabic heritage from her grandmother, which I think is very cool. I think it's very interesting. Honestly, these shows are adapted from comics, so there's going to be differentiations from the comic to the screen. And what they did, I thought, was pretty cool because it, it shows ethnicity in it. So we get more mm-hmm. Arabic culture culture within it, especially with her parents and how I think they're a little bit more Americanized than most. As I recall, when I was a kid and I knew people that were either Pakistani, Arabic, or Egyptian cultured, a lot of the parents were very stringent. These people are very much stern with their kids, but... In Kamala's case, uh, she's one of those that just, you know, looks to the world and her world is in fantasy. And we do see mm-hmm. that. And that that's what I loved about the whole atmosphere of the episode, too, because 
we're seeing it through her thoughts and her eyes, and it's very cartoonish. And I, I yeah. love that aspect in it. Yeah, I thought that the integration of animation with uh, with the live action was really cool. With her daydreaming and stuff, was just was awesome to see that mix kind of there. Yeah, it 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 it, it added to the warmth of it and to the character itself, and knowing it from her perspective, I, I just really loved that mm-hmm. idea. And I'm looking forward to what we get now. Mind you, the powers are different from the comic. In the comic, she's very stretchy. She's like an elastic mm. woman, <laughs> like, kind of, oh, like kind of like okay. Reed Richards. Yeah, this is more like a kind of a Green Lanternish kind Correct. of. It manifests in whatever she kind of needs at the time, exactly. you know. Because like that, when she when she he's boosting her up onto the uh, the roof to crawl back into her window, he's like, well, did, "Did that just come out of your shoe?" And like some the little light came out, and she kind of jumped up a little yep. bit. So I I think it's it's going to be an interesting. Um, uh, does she fly or does she jump? They we're gonna have the same Jesse our Jessica Jones yep. <laughs> conundrum. Um, uh, does she fly or does she jump? But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for the rest of the series. I'm excited to see where they they take this character. I'm excited to see uh, you know the formation of a new hero. We haven't really had that. Yes. I mean, I guess Moon Knight kind of was, but Moon Knight was was known to some of us. Like he wasn't known to the the outside a lot of the public but there were several of us you and i included that were fans of of the moon knight from 40 years yep. ago or 30 30 years ago and so i'm as excited to see that to see this character who's relatively like you said she was introduced in 2015 in the comics to see this relatively new character in a, in a different version of the character i'm uh, i'm hoping we're going to get a cameo at some point from captain marvel i think that, that would, would be, be amazing really Brie cool. Larson coming in um yep. yeah and and to see where that takes us because I know they've kind of revamped or they've talked about the revamping the Marvels um, lineup movie or is that a t- the, the Avengers the, yeah for the for Captain for Captain Marvel two is what I meant they've kind of revamped some things yeah. with Captain Marvel two because of this new character and uh, it's going to be exciting to see when Captain Marvel uh, two comes yeah out. especially so, yeah you already spoke about it the fact that she's going to be involved within that particular movie so we already know mm-hmm. from the show. We're going to get her in the cinematic universe as well. And yeah. the actress is, is very talented. I really enjoy her. She she does bring it forth and bring the the warmth of the character. And you feel for the character as well within her family and yeah. her struggles. Yeah, the, the warmth and the innocence and, and that struggle, like you said, of she has this mother who's, who's very strict. The, the father seems to be kind of meek, I, which I love the dad, by the way. This is, we're already Abu. into our points. So let's just, let's just keep <laughs> going. Let's just keep going. I loved the father. I thought he was, even though he was kind of a meek personality and a meek character, I really just loved his interaction. I loved how he's portrayed just the idea that he was, he was willing to go along with that Hulk yeah, thing. I love that. His, that, that his his wife <laughs> uh, was just classic that he was willing to go along with that and that it hurt him to the point, you know, with, where even with the Matt Lintz character, um, when he says, oh, Mr. Khan crying, I don't I don't want to see that. You know, <laughs> she's like, I think I made my dad cry. So it was really, really cool. And, and like I said, her mom's kind of more strict. And then we have the brother who uh, I was a little confused about the portrayal of the brother. Was he supposed to be more, you know, strictly – to whatever religion uh, I, I'm assuming Muslim, he, he was more Arabic. Following. He would always do the prayer. He was very stern. Yeah. And then she actually looks at a picture of her brother going, "Oh, when they were younger." So he was a little bit right. different too back then. Now he's yeah. more correct to their culture. So he's the model of what their parents want. Whereas Kamala yeah. is still living in fantasy land, according to her mother, very much like her grandmother which the bracelet comes from. I loved that. As soon as I saw that bracelet, and I'm sure you were the same way, all of it, and especially the way the music played oh, yeah. and everything. As soon as you saw that <laughs> bracelet, you knew that bracelet was going to come into play. And I wonder, now this is one of my suspicions, and I think they're obviously they're going to develop this through the, the, the rest of the season, mm-hmm. but I wonder if the ma- the grandmother had powers. That's what I was thinking. And <laughs> somehow that's what her mother is trying to keep her from from becoming. And or maybe um Kamala's mother didn't know and she always thought that her mom was just this crazy also person kind of in fantasy yeah. land, but as we as she's going to find out, no 
her mom actually did have powers and she has now passed those on to Kamala. I, it's going to be interesting to see that develop and to see where they take that, whether, uh, so I, I think we're kind of on the same page with that one that we're both expecting that there's going to be something about Nani that's going to come out that I just, I, I just yeah. loved. And the, you know, the brother, you, we talked about the brother a little bit. He's, he's in an, he's, in an arranged marriage, we haven't met uh, the the woman yet, exactly. but he's apparently yet has some sort of arranged marriage going on there. So that's going to be interesting to see play out as well. Yeah, I don't think uh, her brother's future wife is going to be Nadia from The Boys, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> not to throw a little uh, touche yeah. to the the last podcast. <laughs> but the the fact is, uh, yeah. It, hit the heartstrings it gave me that feel of peter parker as well but in this case she has Mm -hmm. actually a family and then with this in the very beginning she learns and gets these abilities and it is a new character and i look forward to it Uh, to me like just go off my first thought we already spoke about it the whole cartoon background as she's talking Mm -hmm. And she's talking to her friend Bruno as, uh, you know, about the Avengers and everything else. But as soon as they start talking about Captain America, it goes to like a zombie thing and they talk about zombies <laughs> and we see the cartoons turn into zombies on the wall, yeah. on the buildings. And to me, I thought that was pretty cool. It was a great effect in storytelling with her thoughts projected in the background, especially with her, because obviously she does a podcast or a YouTube and she's mm-hmm. pasting in, and in the very introduction is of her doing her little uh, media, and she's y- we get her story about her love for Captain Marvel, and we see all the different yeah. iterations of Captain Marvel too, because Carol Danvers had long hair, and then next thing you know she had the regular suit, and then she had the short hair, and you know it, it's mm-hmm. pretty cool how they present everything the way it is. It kind of gives it that new meta look very much like Spider-Man homecoming, no way home and far from home. Yeah. Very, very cool. I loved it. And Matt Lentz's character, Bruno is so (laughs) I was a little confused about uh, like, does he live in the same building as her or is it different or they, they close enough? Cause you know, he tells, he tells her to meet me on the roof in 10 minutes. And the, the, there was a little timing, some timing issues that I was confused yeah. about, but, uh, and, and like, he's trying to apply to Caltech and he's got all these gadgets that he's making was really, really cool. I think it was great that he dressed up as Bruce Banner, not as the yep. Hulk. <laughs> I thought, you know, and it was great. He's wearing that lab coat and he's, and she's like, what are you? And he's like, I'm Bruce Banner. Uh, it was just, it was just really, really cool. He's, he's very cute and, uh, cute. I hate to say it about a, about a guy, but, uh, it just, their relationship is very interesting. Interesting as well. This this very again a strong friendship. I don't think there's anything romantic there or anything like that. I think it's just a, a very strong friendship that they have, and they've bonded over these things. Now there was another character that I'm a little confused about, and I don't know if they're going to show us more of her or not. But there was another apparently Hindu girl. Yes, in the in the school we saw her mm-hmm. twice, but she was wearing like the traditional headgear. A Muslim so she shroud. must be from yeah. Uh, yeah, she must be more of a from a traditional family, mm-hmm. but we see her twice, at least twice in the episode. She doesn't say anything. She just kind of like shows support or encouragement yes. to Kamala, which I thought was interesting and I hope they flesh that character out a little bit. I hope we get to more. see more. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, and there was another character too, Zoe who is popular mm-hmm. within school who has the same thing. I guess she has Instagrams and everything else. She has a ton of more followers or whatever, but she, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Somebody says a hundred thousand followers and Kamala corrects her and says 80, she only has 80,000. So obviously they have a kind of a rivalry going with their, their, uh, social media presence. Maybe yeah, that's a thing too, because this is generation Y they, that's what they do. Everything with their presence in this world is based upon media and what they do. And, mm-hmm. you know, to, from you and I, from where we lived in the eighties or went to school in the eighties at that point, it's kind of strange because you wind up like, wait a minute, we never had to go through that. It was kind of different. It was very much jock nerd and everything else oriented. 
Whereas with this, it's very much everything highlighted upon social media. And that's what this, this generation it had grown up on. And it's very yeah. interesting take to look at it from our perspectives. But yeah, the, we got Zoe. Uh, she does show up to Avengers Con. And the, it's because they're doing a Miss Marvel cosplay contest. Obviously, mm-hmm. we know Kamala had and Bruno have created this new suit for her for her Captain Marvel, you know, cosplay. And then we see Zoe, but Zoe looks like the Miss Marvel from the comics from, I would say, yeah. early 80s with the, yeah. the mask yeah, and the, the, the little, uh, uh, I would say, scarf. And the tight knit mm-hmm. suit and everything and a skirt. Yeah. And even Kamala says, he goes, that's not accurate. <laughs> it's like, yeah. But uh, Kamala actually put in that more accurate suit together and Bruno created those cool gloves. They lose the gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Overall, I enjoyed it in the sense that uh, it was more of the journey and mm-hmm. the you know, the, the one cute scene that I see is her sneaking out and she jumps for that branch and she falls on the floor. Yeah. I love that moment when they're on the bridge and they kind of look and they're like, no, we're not doing it. the whole jump from the, we jump from a bridge on our bikes. And she's like, you got to dream big. And then we see that same moment when it's in reality. And they're like, yeah, no, we're not doing exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> they just go down the stairs. So I thought was, was really, again, a cool thing. It was sad that she lost her yep. bike. Um, yeah. It's but it Jersey was, City. It, <laughs> was cool. It was cool to see them kind of that double riding, the, the riding double like that. And, uh, you know, he, he's very quick to get her out of there when her powers kind of manifest. Yes. And he's like, you know, cause Zoe didn't recognize who she nope. was. Cause she's, you know, Zoe's like asking her, Oh, do you do parties? This is a great costume. You've got this light show that you were able to do. And, but then when, she, when she saves Zoe, she disappears. Yep. And that's cause Bruno pulled her out. So that again, that's going to be one of those interesting things. Like you said, with the whole Peter Parker thing to where we're going to see how does her secret identity kind of play out how is this superhero because you know she's still learning and we saw at the very end you know she's kind of playing in the it, it, she's in bed there and she's just kind of lighting up her hand <laughs> and so she's kind of using her powers and and trying to learn about it so i thought uh, that's that's gonna be interesting again it's it's gonna be kind of cool to see a superhero develop yeah. we haven't seen that in a while we, to see an actual the development of a superhero yeah, the, the, um, the so last I, one that we got was actually peter parker spider-man himself mm-hmm. And that was yeah, e- several yeah, times, uh, several times, but I'm talking in the MCU in the sense that <laughs> right. we were introduced to him during civil wars, but then we actually saw him develop with the three films mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, we just ended on the third one with no way home. And now we don't have anything new. Uh, maybe with Ant-Man too. Remember with Paul Rudd when he first mm-hmm. started out on the scene. Yeah, there was there was some development there as well. He had to learn how to how to use the powers and use the suit. So yeah, we we did have that with Ant Man. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. So so yeah, so we have had it, but it's going to be cool to see. It's like a you, young you kid about though. This actress, right? And this actress brings an innocence and and like you said, a warmth to this character. That's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see how how does she play out? Is she gonna is she gonna wear the bracelet all the time? Mm. Is she gonna take it on and yeah. off? What's what's going to be the the uh, the way she actually uses it and uh so it's, it's gonna be interesting to see i'm uh uh again I'm, I'm intrigued it's only one episode in but i'm uh I, i'm i'm excited to see where this this series is gonna yeah, go same here uh one part that i truly love within the actual episode was avengers con itself because you mm-hmm. had so many cool things within it that you actually do see at conventions but in this case yeah. they have like a hulk a hulk section and then you could power up like the hulk and do a whole bunch of events uh, they had a Thor section. Uh, there was this uh, the music and the uh, announcement that they had at Stark Expo during the con. It, I don't know if you caught that from Captain America 1 mm-hmm. or the first Captain America. Yeah, I, I heard so – I, I caught – there was a there was a lot of things alluding to the bigger yeah. MCU that was out there that was really, really cool to see. Uh, and we, we – once we get to it, we need to talk to – talk about that post credit scene as well when we get when we get there. But uh, uh, we did – I just remember we did get a line from that character, that other girl, because she's the one that says, I, I, I do hate the game though when they're talking about Smash Brothers. Yeah. So she's like, if you're going to invite me – but 
for whatever reason, maybe she's not as big a fan of the Avengers as Bruno and Kamala are. And that's why she wasn't involved in going to the Avenger con. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Again, uh, the counselor character is, is going to be interesting to see if we see more <laughs> of him. Uh, he's, he's kind of a jerk, but at the same time, he's trying to, to not be, he's a trying jerk, to be the friend. Really- and you can tell that, yeah, he, he has to be, uh, a, a gay male who works in a school, but is trying to mm-hmm. adhere and uh, adhere to helping these kids and talk to them on their playing field. Yes, Kamala Khan, mm-hmm. that means you come here. And it, it's so cool for the fact that he's able to, but he snaps her out of it. He goes, you do it again. You're daydreaming. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It, it's like an adult understanding these kids, this, mm-hmm. despite their sexuality or anything, but you could tell he was a little bit flamboyant and you know who he was. And I love that aspect that we actually do have something like that because within the comic, they actually mentioned that Kamala herself was uh, a, a gay character, but I don't know if they're going to actually do that within the movie or the show. Okay, so movie itself. Yeah, I was confused. I was confused about that because I've heard other people say that and seen that in in the comic book. Is she is is she a, a gay character? From in the what comic I book? read and what I remember, they were okay. playing it off that she was a gay character. Okay, so we don't we don't know yet whether the TV series is going to follow that path. I don't think they will. Path I I, I yeah. don't think they will. I'm thinking if they do pursue anything, we know that Kamala's got these ca- uh, these powers. She's just going to be learning. She has her best mm-hmm. friend, who I think is going to be like our Ned for Peter. He's going to be her, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to be her guy in the chair, and mm-hmm. he's he's yeah. going to help her out and get her where she needs. But what I do see in the future, if possible, and it's probably me hoping, some something romantic between these two kids. Because you could see how he is with her family and they love him. With yeah. the, the way they treat him, it's like family. And I wouldn't be surprised. Or maybe there'll be a, a love triangle or a twist uh, eventually in the future. I don't think they would do that within the first season. But, yeah. but uh, I just love the fact the way that Matt Lentz comes in. And uh, Kamala's mom calls Bruno Beta because he does all the school stuff. And uh, yeah, but she was calling. She was calling both the kid, both the brother, both Kamala and her brother. She was calling them, or she was calling Kamala Beta uh, as well. So I, I wasn't sure. I, I kind of didn't might understand. Might be an Arabic thing about kids. That maybe yeah. She, she she they were definitely calling Kamala Beta, and I couldn't hear what they called. They did call Bruno something. Um, but they definitely called Kamala several times. They called her Beta, okay. and I don't know, like you said, if that's a, a, an Arab thing from because she's the second child. The brother would be the Alpha. She would be the uh, I don't know. Okay, or I, I'm not sure what that was was referred to because they kept kind of going in and out of Hindi, Arabic, and English. Like they would they would sprinkle in yeah some of those Arabic Especially words every once in a while, and yeah, and in the in the closed captioning, you can see that it's a different language. Yes. So, but they don't, they didn't identify it in the closed captioning that I had. Yeah. Yeah. So. Disney plus, please fix that. <laughs> we need to know. <laughs> we want to be aware of these things. We want to be proper. <laughs> uh, yeah. I did enjoy that too. For the fact, it's funny how they make fun of the, uh, she makes fun of the brother about praying before he eats. And the father actually says, he goes, you know, by the time you finish praying, it's going to be cold. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, again, that's where I was a little confused about some of the little character points there of the parents aren't quite as traditional as, but yet the brother, because he's got the beard, and that's very Arabic, the, yeah. the beard he, he has. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this, how they, they kind of intermix this. It, uh, it might have been forward. the fact that, you know, if you think about Kamala's mom and her father. Her father is not as strict as her, her mother, but I wouldn't be surprised if the mother initiated the idea of her brother getting married and having this arranged marriage, and then mm. the brother complying, and then yeah. the father is yeah. just there being like, "I'm here. I'm the yeah. I'm the fun parent, you know." Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, and and you could see that Kamala and her brother do have a relationship, but. It's one of where he is stuck in that world as time went by. And then, you know, she she's mm-hmm. on her own path. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's it's it, you know there's always I'm I'm the youngest of five, and I just spent my vacation. I was with my brother and my sister, who are both in their sixties, you know, and so there's a little bit of a generation gap yeah. there, and you can see kind of the same thing here between her and her brother. There's kind of a generation gap to where her brother looks like he's in you know at least his late twenties. I would say his uh, early twenties. I wouldn't say late. Okay, he might be that young. the the beard The beard throws me off with age. It does. So he may yeah. be closer to her age than I. But I, I, I just got the impression that he was a little bit older, but older than her. But uh, but we'll see yeah. going forward. We'll see who the who the if we ever do see the wife, the the uh, sorry, the fiance. Um, we'll see, and if they ever do, because we don't know what he if he has a job. Yeah. We don't see him working. Um, so it's it's again, it's gonna be one of those things that it's it, it's only the first episode and. <laughs> We, we've got a lot, a lot to go for. It's only six episodes. It's another one of the six episode ones. So we'll get these close to an hour yeah. length episodes. Yeah, but we so. were given very uh, much a lot of good stuff with uh, Hawkeye, uh, mm-hmm. Moon Knight, Falcon, Falcon and Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier, all that good yeah. stuff. Uh, WandaVision, you know, we've been given mm-hmm. all these great, you know, I, I think WandaVision was longer, if I recall. Well, yeah, WandaVision was more of a 30 minute. They were more 30 minutes until it got later. And then they, they went a little bit longer, I think, in the later episode. I think they found that trend with, okay, let's do six episodes at close to an hour, like 40 minutes plus. Mm -hmm. And then that way, that's it. You get like almost six hours of, uh, entertainment from this. At least it, it, it expands and works on the story, at least. And that's what I do appreciate about with these, uh, you know, we have, more to look forward to because we're going to get She-Hulk and Mm -hmm. that I'm looking forward to as well. All the uh, coming attractions and trailers are are amazing with that. But yeah, I think we're we're probably going to get introduced how she learns her abilities and then go from there. And the next step would be movies. And I think they'll probably do that with uh, She-Hulk too as well. And with Moon Knight, we kind of left it off where he can come back as we know. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, uh, who was it that was the the third character? Jake. Jake, Jake Lockley. Lockley. Yep. I yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, we're going to see. I, I don't know. I'm still like, I, I I love the Moon Knight series. I just hope we're not done with it. I, if, I don't if think If they just done. leave it at that, I would be disappointed because there needs to be more of him. In the MCU, whether they do another TV series or they do a movie or they get him into the, the, you know, they need to do something more with that character. I just feel they, it's going to be, and, and now we're drifting off from this, but that's, that's <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, uh, it'll, it, they'll, they'll have missed, they'll have missed for me if they don't do Same something here. more with Moon Knight. Yeah. There's so. so much that they could do with that particular character. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, back to this. Uh, well, the penultimate, you know, my last favorite moment would be the cosplay event and when she does her powers do come into play <laughs> you know yeah you know, she's thrown up there the lights are on she has she puts on her grandmother's bracelet power kicks in she falls back it's like if she's in another world now i didn't stop the screen or pause it because there's a lot going on within that scene mm-hmm. so it looked like uh, images of people behind her like spirits or something and then she comes back to reality. Yeah, I, I think again that's going to be another one of those things that that hopefully they'll they'll give us more of that at yeah. some point. Yeah, fill us in on what's going on with that uh, because, like I said, it, maybe this bracelet is kind of a Green Lantern kind of thing to where it's passed yeah. down from generation to generation to other people, and uh, maybe she'll get something like that. So the only thing I've got more on this is just talking about the post credit yep. scene there. And I've heard a lot of speculation about it. I didn't see some of the things that I've heard people, I guess that maybe they've paused it and that they believe these two characters were agents from the damage control yes. department. Um, that's what I've, what I've heard uh, speculated, but uh, obviously we're going to see them again because but we haven't seen these two particular agents before right no but the funny thing okay. is is the last time we actually saw anything of damage control was literally in spider-man homecoming when mm-hmm. we saw uh tyne daly's character walk in now we were just mm-hmm. talking about tim daly before we recorded because <laughs> he'll be <laughs> at terrific con and my friend rob and i are going but uh tyne was there uh 
as damage control talking to Michael Keaton's uh, the Vulture character. That was the right, only right. time we encountered those people. And now they're coming back, so I'm curious if the government has something more involved with uh, kind of like what like superheroes or anybody of anomalies. Well, remember that we are we are in the post um uh end game. What were the accords? The accords. Oh yeah, that is the, true. Yeah. The, we're we're in that to where where superheroes are supposed to be regulated and or so registered. If a new super or registered or something like that, yeah, that that if a new superhero pops up, they're going to have to do something yep. about it. And so, I enjoyed that. I'm curious to see what they do next. It, it's kind of mm-hmm. similar to with Cat Dennings, and uh, I'm forgetting that the Asian actor's character who is an Ant Man. He was. Oh yeah, Park Randall, Randall Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. They were part of that whole thing where they were investigating Wanda. And mm-hmm. they were part of the government. It could be that same company. Who knows? It could be part of damage control. Who knows? Uh, I'm just yeah. going to take it as it comes to see what we get. Yeah. You know, and that's that's what I'm looking at. I'm not reading any books. I'm not looking more into Miss Marvel. This character right now is something I am not entirely familiar with, just like with Moon Knight. So I'm taking it mm-hmm. as it comes when it comes to the show. I only know a little bit about the original character from the comic. But they right. uh, did push that particular character to be part of the new Avengers, the or the young Avengers, as it were. So okay. if we do get a young Avengers, we might get that out of this particular character as well. But we don't yeah. know until time comes. Right. For quotes, I only have one. And this mm-hmm. is Kamala's mother saying, this is my fault with my genetics. We all came from a line that had daydreamers and my mother was one of them as well <laughs> meaning yeah, that's where yeah. kamala gets it from mm-hmm. yeah and the only one i have is, is the one that i said before when they were talking about smash brothers and she says don't kamala says don't hate the player hate the game and the <laughs> other girl says but i do hate the game though so i thought that was great <laughs> all right we don't have any feedback uh we're gonna skip podcast recommendations and youtube recommendations we'll leave that for a longer podcast episode Okay. But for the most part, we'll just go right into uh, how people could submit their feedback. Obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whichever that is, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, we would love for you to give us a rating or review. If that's if that's possible, we'll give you a shout out if we find out about it. So, uh, yeah, look us up. We're on all the big ones. Yep. And check out our website, which would be panelspixelspodcast.com. Currently under construction, but it will be completely finalized by the end of July. I am working on that. I have Bluehost on my side. <laughs> Very cool. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. That's panels to pixels all spelled out in words. Uh, we are on Twitter and that can be found at panels to pixels. So at sign panels, the number two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels two pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. And you could just send us out a regular texted email if you like. If you don't want to be out there writing a bunch of stuff and want to talk to us, just record yourself, put it as an attachment on the email and just send it to us. We'll play it right here on the podcast and we'll comment. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, and all you have to do is search for us on YouTube with Panels to Pixels podcast. You'll see our podcast image right there, so all you have to do is subscribe and give a thumbs up. All it is is the podcast itself on YouTube. Sometimes, just sometimes, you might find a video there. Look for that particular video when we achieve number 200. And Very we cool. have a lovely guest Yes, so. we are on Instagram at Panels Two Pixels Podcast. That's all spelled out in words at Panels Two Pixels Podcast on Instagram. And check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all. Wilhelm, especially with Ben Beck, with his coverage with uh, celebrity interviews, as well as his breakdown. I-, I really loved his George Clooney one that he did with his friend uh, about all the the five top George Clooney movies that they loved. Really interesting. Uh, I sent some feedback in there, and I really enjoyed it. I did as well. I still need to listen to that one. It's cute. Yeah, up, it's so. awesome, dude. It was pretty cool. I think I gave Ben a zinger. He goes, oh, well, well Mark sent a long message here. <laughs> 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 but actually, it was pretty cool. He really enjoyed it. He didn't realize about a movie that I mentioned. And he was like, oh, I forgot nice. he was in that. 
So uh, check those out. Uh, the Melting Pad is on there, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com, and uh, everything will be in our notes as well, so you can get there. Very cool. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, you can hear me right here on Panels to Pixels podcast. Uh, I love, I'm back, and uh, Mark and I are going to be doubling up here the next few weeks with the boys and Ms. Marvel. So, plus, there's a lot of content coming out this summer that we're going to be excited uh, for you to hear what we have to say about it. You can also hear me, as I just mentioned, I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do. Awesome. Yeah, that is true. We're going to have a lot more con- content as we go by. Uh, well, where else you could listeners hear me? Well, I could be found on the PowerCore Entertainment Network with Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. You could easily just look for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on your podcast player of choice. There we cover action, adventure, thriller, suspense films, fantasy films, all the cool stuff that gets your adrenaline going. Uh, last night, uh, Reba and... Damien and I did a combined, it's a watched it in the 80s and Adrenaline Cinema podcast all in one. And you got three of us talking about Top Gun Maverick. So check that out. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, it'll be next up in your queue by the end of the week. So check that out when it comes out. Very cool. And so with that, that's our coverage of Miss Marvel this week. We will be back next week for The Boys, Miss Marvel. And probably whatever else is coming out. Uh, who knows? I think Thor Love and Thunder is going to be coming by the end of the month. So we're going to have to cover that as well in some way. But uh, that is our show for tonight. And I look forward to hearing from you guys if you do have any feedback. So thank you all for listening. I am Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night.